Welcome to today's edition of the CIO Water Cooler TV. Uh, my name is David Savage. I'm your host for today's session, and I'm lucky to be joined by Nigel, the CIO Europe for PepsiCo. How are you? Great, David, and thanks for having me. Really good to be here with you. Now, I imagine that most people hear PepsiCo and go, all right, I know, I know who Pepsi are, but it's worth kind of just talking very quickly about what the business really looks like, because putting you into a sector in the broader context of technology might not be the easiest thing actually to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, um, so I've got the pleasure of um, leading our information technology team across Europe. So I'm based here in, in Geneva. We've got about 40,000 associates across Europe in 40 plus countries. And as an IT team, we really power that business behind the fantastic brands. So Walkers, Lays, Doritos, Quaker Oats, as well as, of course, Pepsi, Pepsi Max, as you might imagine. And to be honest, I, I didn't know that Doritos and those snacks and so on were part of PepsiCo until having a look at this, uh, this interview beforehand. So as I said, it, it, it's, it's possibly surprising. You hear these companies and you go, oh, OK, I didn't know they were X, Y and Z as well. <laughs> yeah, we, we've also got a big dairy business out in Russia and Eastern Europe as well. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a big, diverse uh, business that we've got. So dairy beverages, food, um, fair to say that you're an agriculture business? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, look, so agriculture really is at the heart of our business. Um, you know, we work with over 2,300 farmers just in Europe alone. And, you know, it's a, a massive part of, of, of our, our the, the way that we run the business is, is all from agriculture, basically. You know, all the foods, you know, whether it's our potatoes, whether it's our corn, whether it's our oats, it all starts in a field somewhere with our farmers. Now, that then prompts the obvious question around sustainability, because farming, mass agriculture has had the spotlight put on it in recent times. As CIO, as, as the technology team, where... What's your remit or, or reach into helping to look at that industry and go, all right, how can technology can be, uh, how can technology be applied and how can digital transformation help make sure that that is um, as efficient and as sustainable as it can be? Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a fabulous area for us. Um, it's an area I'm really passionate about myself. Um, we've launched, you know, across PepsiCo, an initiative that we call PepsiCo Positive. So it's our strategic end-to-end -end transformation that really has got sustainability at the center. We put out some really bold targets, such as becoming carbon neutral by 2040, becoming water positive by 2030, as well as introducing more sustainable packaging. And you know, when you look at digital transformation, you know, one of the key things is it enables us to be much faster, much more agile, and much more precise. So you know, there's three big trends. You know, one is the exponential growth in data, of course, you know, whether it's consumer, whether it's you know, about our retailers, whether it's about our farmers, whether it's our internal supply chain. Secondly, we have this vast um, access to cloud computing. And thirdly, machine learning. And when you put all those together, it enables us to be much more precise about we, the way we run the business. And of course, reducing waste, being more precise, is a big enabler of sustainability. Um, uh, do you want me to, I can give you a couple of examples of where we've actually mm. applied some technology there. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that would be interesting because my my point to jump in on that would be, yeah, totally get what you're saying. But then when you talk about growth in cloud, in data, in machine learning, there's this balancing act, right? Because we know that there is this carbon footprint, this invisible carbon footprint that's associated with technology. So I suppose it's right. How can we make agriculture and farming efficient, but make sure that machine learning is also looking at our own processes to reduce that impact. Uh, it's an absolutely great point. And that's why, you know, everything you look at from a sustainability point of view, you really do have to consider, you know, the whole picture and make sure that you're not just, you know, pushing a problem from one place to another. Um, but where we see the opportunities in agriculture in particular is with this uh, concept of precision agriculture. So, um, you know, it really has the potential to be as transformative as really, you know, the mass mechanization that happened really in the last century in terms of agriculture. A um, couple of good examples that I could, could give you here. One is um, potato growing. So we obviously, you know, grow a lot of potatoes, our farmers grow a lot of potatoes for us. Um, 
and several years ago actually started this work alongside the University of Cambridge Farms, developed a tool that we call iCrop. And basically what it enables us to do is to analyze you know, vast amounts of data from the fields, looking at weather information as well, to optimize the actual input. So whether it's fertilizer, whether it's water. So that enables us to reduce both the emissions, but also the water usage. And there's a similar concept, something we call Optiote, which is um, how we optimize the way that we grow oats. And this uses some predictive analytics to look at, okay, given certain soil conditions, weather conditions, you know, what should we be able to get in terms of quality and yield? And then enables our farmers to take some specific actions to actually improve that. So you're absolutely right. We have to take everything into account across the supply chain and the enablers such as cloud computing. But you know, we'd see this technology as a big enabler of, um, of, uh, of reducing our, our, our emissions and also the water sustainability as well. But you, you touch on something really interesting there because you talk about a partnership with Cambridge University. As CIO of an organization, I suppose if we re rewind 10 or 15 years ago and we weren't on the cutting edge of these technologies, you, you wouldn't necessarily be looking at institutions like that to help you with algorithms, data sets, and so on. But I suppose it's just the reality of the world that we're living in now, that if it's machine learning and the scale that you're talking about at PepsiCo, that you have to rely on partnerships with universities and other organizations to provide you with the expertise. Uh, it's absolutely right. I mean, you know, there are so many great you know, hotspots out there in terms of technology and particularly startups. So we really look to work both with academic institutions, but also and uh, probably even more so startups. We've got a specific venturing unit and their, their sole role in life is to be working with startup communities. So we basically set some of our most difficult problems that we've got to solve and then look for some startup companies that can have some really innovative ideas to help us on this. Um, you know, one of the really nice examples on this one is, is water intelligence. So um, you can imagine our factories use quite a lot of water. And as I say, one of our targets is to become water um, positive by 2030. Um, there's a company called Wint who specialize in using machine learning to optimize water usage. So with smart meters, uh, smart sensors, they use machine learning to you know, understand what the pattern should be. And then immediately that anything looks odd, whether it's a leak, whether it's a valve stopping working, either alerting the technicians or in some cases actually taking action themselves. There's actually, if anyone's interested in, in seeing more about it, there's a great little video on CNN Business about this technology. And, and one of the examples they've got there is from our Belgian plant um, where we actually tried this, uh, this technology with some really, really great, great results. So yeah, there's um, endless areas that we, we uh, can work on. We, we, as I say, we, we really look particularly at you know, some of the academic institutions and startup um, companies you know, as well as obviously developing technology ourselves. So big ecosystem that we have to work with to make sure that we, in the end, get, you know, the best ideas, the best technology to, you know, to, to help, us, help us as a business. Now look, last quick question. As, as CIO of an international organization, CIO for Europe, working with thousands of farmers, with, with partnerships into uh, academia as well as enterprise, what does your inbox look like for the next six months as parts of the world begin to emerge from the situation we found ourselves in for the last 18 months? Good question. Uh, well, it's pretty full, but, but it's pretty exciting as well, actually. Um, you know, there's a huge amount, obviously, internally that we're doing. But the, the thing that, you know, I think, you know, is changing, I think the pandemic helped this, is much more collaboration. I mean, another example, which I love to give is, um, and I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's an initiative called the Holy Grail Project. So it's about digital watermarks and it's a collaboration amongst um, you know, a number of, um, of manufacturers around recyclability. So one of the issues you probably know about with recycling is that it's very difficult to sort it. So digital watermarks are actually something that are invisible to the human eye, but actually can cover the packaging. And then a high speed camera in a recycling center can actually read that. And based on information about whether it's food, whether it's non-food, different types of polymers can actually sort the, um, the plastics much more and, and other, other materials much more efficiently. So some of those collaborations that we're doing with other manufacturers are, are coming much more to the fore as well. So yeah, very, very exciting agenda over the next uh, six months and beyond. Well, look, thank you for spending some time with us today. It's, uh, it's greatly appreciated. Thanks very much, David. Real pleasure to be with you. And if you've enjoyed today's episode of the CIO Watercooler TV, don't forget there's plenty more. Stay on the website, have a look around. Thanks for joining us today.